All right, so having read in uh, the mouse input, click, drag uh, the position, we can also read the previous mouse position. Um, that's another variable that's stored by p5.js, and we'll see in a second that that can be super useful for making drawings and things like that. So here again is my template. I've got this all kind of set up. I've got no cursor turned on because um, we're going to make our own cursor here. Um, and this actually, this example is pretty straightforward. It's just building on the things that we already had. We know we can read mouse X and mouse Y, uh, but we also have P mouse X and P mouse Y, which stands for previous mouse X and Y. Um, and if we think about a line, a line needs two points. We have two points here, the previous and the current position, and we can use this to draw um, kind of a line between as we move our cursor around. So let's go ahead and do stroke of, you know what, I'm going to make this a little brighter. This time we've been kind of dreary looking. Let's do a black stroke and we can do a line between mouse X, mouse Y, and P mouse X and P mouse Y. That's it. Super easy. Save it, run it again here, and you can see, let me make that stroke weight a little bigger. That's a little easier to see. Now you can see it create, now I have to move it very fast, but you can see this line created behind my cursor. Very different kind of interaction than the last one where it's like uh, bubbly and moving around. This feels you know, much quicker, like a fly darting around or something like that. Um, but we can actually add one cool additional parameter to background here, um, and that is transparency. So normally our background is opaque and it draws over every frame, but if we add the transparency, or actually, you know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and see what happens if we have no background. Um, so now we're gonna get something like this. Our background is never getting drawn. Um, so it's not drawing over the previous stuff. We keep just um, adding and adding and adding to it as our cursor moves around. And this might be what you want. You might wanna just be able to kind of like infinitely be adding to it. But in our background command, if we add this transparency, we get kind of the best of both worlds. We get this video trails, video feedback looking kind of thing um, where eventually it dies away, but it does so slowly. And if we change this alpha value, we can change how quickly that, that happens. So zero is fully um, transparent. So we can see 20 is very low. And I don't know if it's showing up on the video here, but there's some very, faint hint of what's back there. If we make this even lower. Now, eventually the number gets so low that it doesn't, it kind of breaks. It doesn't really work right. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty cool effect like that. I really like this. Uh, so let's leave that and let's add one more thing um, to our code here. If we think about what um, having the previous mouse position offers us, we also know or we can calculate the, the distance traveled between the current mouse position and the previous one. Um, now we could use the Pythagorean theorem and, and do this by hand, but fortunately, uh, P5.js has this built-in distance command. And we, just like the line, we give it two points and it measures the distance for us between them. So that's super easy. All I'm doing is measuring that distance. I'm calling it speed because that tells me how far or fast I'm moving. And now we can define the diameter of our um, of our cursor based on um, based on this. So diameter, and I'm going to use map again. Oops, map speed. Um, now here's where I have to guess because I don't know necessarily. You know, map requires an input range. We know the slowest speed would be zero. We don't really know what the fastest speed is going to be. So I'm going to try a hundred, and then I might want to tune those numbers to see the result. And then I want the minimum to be five, maybe the same as our stroke here, and the maximum to say be 100. And then I can say, you know, fill, I'm gonna make this semi-transparent so we can see no stroke and a circle at mouse X, mouse Y, and using that diameter value. And now I get these dots that if I move really slowly, the circle stays really small. And if I move quicker, the circle gets bigger. 
Now, if we wanted, we could also flip this. So map would allow us to reverse this range. If I went from 100 to 5, now the slower I move, the bigger the circle, and the faster it's going to get smaller. It's going to be a little harder to see here, especially unless I can really move quick. Um, but these are, again, things that you can play around with as you start exploring interactivity and seeing kind of what makes sense or what feels intuitive or just like what looks cool as a result. Um, so that's previous mouse X. It's useful for sure for drawing lines. We'll see in a few examples and um, a way we can extend this idea. Um, but you can also, like we're doing here, use it to measure speed. You could also think about what other things those two sets of numbers give you. Um, it gives you angle of direction of motion, all that kind of stuff. So you could start, again, just simple tools, but applying them in really complex ways to make cool forms of interaction.